Hi, I am Michaela Bowers, and the project I am presenting to you today is the molecular identification of fungi on above ground versus subterranean portions of reticular termes nests. I, along with the assistance of my advisor, Dr. Postava Davin Young, have been working on this project for the spring 2021 semester at Virginia Wesleyan University. Today I will present my findings and the importance of my results. To give a little background on my research, I have provided the importance of my research project is to aid in the identification of each fun fungus collected with the aid in learning new information about termite behavior and cohabitation with the soil fungus. It is predicted that if the fungus species affecting the termites is identified on a molecular basis, then this will aid in the treatment and knowledge of the termite susceptibility to being affected by the fungus. My hypothesis for my data is, if the fungus species present in the soil are identified, then this information will help the researcher have a better understanding on how the fungus is affecting the reticular termes nests. To begin the process of this research, I had to decide on a test subject to center my research around. For this project in particular, I chose to focus on the insect, the termite. Termites are identified specifically in the order Isoptera, ranked as reticular termes. In Virginia, spe specifically on the campus of Virginia Wesleyan University, two different classes of termites were identified, the reticular termes virginicus in the first soil site and the reticular termes flavibes in the second and third site. These insects exhibit unique features as they are the most common subterranean termites found on the eastern coast of the United States. These reticular termes belong to the predominantly wooded and subterranean climates. These areas are present in ecosystems of temperate forestry where a large abundance of decaying wood and soil is prominent, creating a home for the termites. As my research fo focused more on the fungus present in the soil, I chose areas that would be the most positively correlated with the presence of termites. The termite has a social hierarchy or caste system in which they are ranked based on their capabilities and roles in the nest. As seen in the cartoon, termites are ranked in the, in the roles of workers, soldiers, and developed termites called alates. As mentioned before, the test material for this research was soil. Two different types of soil were collected and identified. The first was above ground soil, which can be seen on the surface of the ground as seen in picture one. The second type of soil collected was the subterranean soil or deep soil as seen in picture two. The subterranean soil samples that were collected were approximately 30 centimeters deep below the surface. Soil was chosen as the test material because this was the home to the fungus that is being extracted in relation to the reticular termes nests. The soil samples collected were all collected from the grounds of Virginia Wesleyan University. Two of the sample sites identified as VWU1 and VWU2 were collected from the wooded area surrounding the trails of Wesleyan. The second sample site, VWU3, was a dirt path off the side of the road leading to the power plant on Virginia Wesleyan's campus. Pictures of the collection sites can be seen on the left side of the screen. Each has been labeled based on its assigned site location. Each site had six samples collected from it, three above ground and three subterranean samples. For the three sites, a total of 18 samples were collected. The methods for this project are outlined to show the steps that were taken to obtain the data for this research. The first step, the first picture shows me collecting the surface soil samples from VWU1 site on the trails of Wesleyan. The fourth picture shows, shows the soil sampler in one of the samples that was extracted. My research was focused predominantly on the soil sticking out of the bottom of the sampler as this is the deepest sample we could reach with the sampler. Picture three is a picture of the DNA extraction kit used for this particular project. The kit was by Kayigan and is called the DN Easy Power Soil Pro Kit. As seen in the picture, several buffers and collection tubes were provided to aid in the extraction of the DNA from the fungus in the soil. The final picture, picture two, is the logo of the company my samples were sent to to aid in better identification of the specifics of the fungal DNA extracted. 
As previously stated, my results were collected and identified in a series of steps. These steps have been listed in a flowchart format to indicate the order they were performed. For the results of my research, the collection of the samples was first putting the soil in sterile collection tubes and labeling them according to the date, site name, and which soil it was. An example of this can be seen in the second photo. The next step was the DNA extraction. The DNA kit contains substances to homogenize and extract the DNA from the soil samples and was stored in collection tubes. To verify that the extraction was done properly and DNA was collected, a gel electrophoresis was done on each side of samples. The samples were put into a 0.8% agarose gel along with a negative control and a DNA ladder. For each sample run, a loading die was added to approximately 15 microliters of extraction sample. For better understanding, a key is present for reference. From the gels run, it can be seen that in all three locations, the surface samples had a much higher concentration of DNA present than in the deep samples. From the three samples, VW3 appears to have the highest concentration of DNA, both, with both samples, surface and deep soil, having DNA present. In the other two sites, DNA deep samples appeared to have very little, if any, DNA. This can be due to the lack of microbes being present this deep in the soil level, leading to less fungus and DNA presence. The surface samples would be expected to have more fungus and microbes present in which to create, in which create the DNA because there is more life and activity on the surface. The surface would have more life and activity going on as opposed to the subterranean soil. Because the surface soil contains all of the decaying wood and plant material that the termites feed off of. The fungus coming from this decaying material is carried by the termites deeper into the soil through their tunnels. The tunnels are known to go deep into the subterranean soil, however the farther down the termites travel, the less fungus they transport with them, thus leading to less fungus being present. The overall findings of the gel electrophoresis were consistent to the predictions of DNA presence. To further verify that the DNA was present in the samples, a DNA concentration was taken using a DNA quantification machine. The DNA concentration was collected and processed in nanograms per microliters. The samples for the soil were run and put into a chart to show the difference in the concentration of DNA in the surface to deep soil. From the chart, the data verified what was shown by the gel electrophoresis, that the surface soil had more DNA than the deep soil, it is seen in the third site had a higher DNA concentration in the surface and deep soil than the soil in the first and second site. The second site had the lowest amount of DNA concentration out of all three sites sampled. These tests allowed for preliminary identification of the DNA present in the samples, with which were tested for their fungus abundance in relation to the termites. These steps allow for enough information to be collected to send the samples to a sequencing company named Mr. DNA which will aid in the identification of my samples. Drawing conclusions from this DNA allows for me to conclude the fungus is more prominent in the surface soil samples in relation to the presence of reticular termes. The data positively correlated with my hypothesis of fungus being prominent in the surface soil. This is due to the decaying plant material. Fungus presence is positively correlated with the presence of termites. Each of the sample sites had active termites in the area, indicating that the fungus was not of any da danger to the termite colony. It has been theorized in previous studies suggesting that interactions among fungi may suppress pathogenic effects and promote termite survival. Termites often ingest materials that are present in their nests containing the fungus, such as wood rot. This wood rot fungus is ingested, thus altering the termite's behavior and physiological makeup. This has concluded my presentation. I would like to express my thanks to my advisor on this project, Dr. Postava Davignon, for her help and guidance in the process of conducting this research and her expertise in the topic of reticular termes. 
I would also like to thank the Lighthouse for providing funding to me to buy necessary supplies and equipment and to send my samples to Mr. DNA for further testing, and to the Virginia Wesleyan Biology Department for allowing me to use several pieces of equipment to conduct this research. My final thank you is to Mr. DNA for confirming my fungal DNA results and providing me with feedback. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.